Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're making punching bags out of the 10 worst bosses to ever appear in fighting games. Note that we are not focusing on bosses that are bad because of their difficulty, but more so on their design, hype, and whether they even follow the game's rules. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long. So be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. The BFR Facebreaker. Facebreaker is already a pretty dreadful fighting game with its basic controls and broken mechanics that can turn matches into a parry or dodge fest. And even if you take the time to study and hone your skills, what kind of a final boss awaits you? A foul-mouthed robot. Worse, a foul-mouthed robot that can shoot missiles at you. The missiles can be tossed back at him, but it doesn't make the fight any more enjoyable. BFR is simply a dumb idea with a dumb gimmick, which is more than fitting for a broken and mediocre game like Facebreaker. The TV Remote Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion We'll give some points to developer Papaya Studio. A TV remote is responsible for mashing all of the Cartoon Network shows together? Not a bad concept! But in execution, that's when all of this falls apart. The TV remote does not do much to put up a fight, and much of the game's rigid demeanor is on full display here. In hindsight, maybe the main villain should have been Aku or Mojo Jojo instead of making one big meta joke. Raido, Dead or Alive 6. You have women fight for you, coward. You won't leave here alive! Pathetic. The Dead or Alive series has had some really tough yet fun boss fights, but Raido, the final boss of the first game, is the most lackluster one. He's slow, hits hard, but is just a boring villain overall. So why bring him back for Dead or Alive 6? Oh, but he has a purpose in the story, because there's this little girl who's a mad scientist and she manages to bring him back to life and gives him cybernetic enhancement, so he's like this robot zombie. Seriously? That's the reason we're bringing Raido back? Look, when we've had awesome villains like Alpha-152, Genra, and Tengu, we just can't help but look at Raido as the weakest link. Honestly, Dead or Alive 6 could have had a better boss, and it deserved a better final boss. <laughs> Al Gol, Soul Calibur 4. This shall be my first battle in ages. You are a worthy opponent. Algol is not like the other entries on our list. In design, he's actually kind of cool. We'd dig him if there wasn't one crucial flaw in his inclusion as a final boss. Algol completely defies the way Soul Calibur 4 plays. The biggest problem with this game is that it is the slowest and clunkiest game in the franchise. Inputs feel laggy even in offline modes, making combos way, way harder to pull off. Al Gol does not suffer from any of that. He will wipe the floor with you without hesitation and pull off the sickest combos that he has. We love him, but knowing that Al Gol's at the end of every arcade ladder, we'd much rather suffer through Soul Calibur V, to be honest. The Pandora Fighters, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. 
This crossover between Capcom and Bandai Namco's biggest fighting games was a big deal back in 2012. Surely they had to have had some awesome idea for a final boss, right? Uh, not really, no. No. Depending on the team that you create, you will end up fighting one of four slightly more powerful versions of pre-existing characters. You'll either face Jin and Shayu, M. Bison and Jury, or Ogre or Akuma by themselves. We get that Street Fighter Cross Tekken already has a really meaty roster that is likely taking up a good amount of disc space with their mechanics and animations. Still, couldn't we have gotten something cooler than recycling fighters with slightly better attacks? Come on, guys. We could have done so much better. <laughs> Chronica, Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat has seen its fair share of dumb villains, but in an era where developer NetherRealm Studios has gone and MCU'd its flagship IP, Kronika should have been their Thanos. Instead, she became their Kang. The realms as you knew them are undone, erased. You cannot save a future that no longer exists. Kronika does next to nothing to try and stop the Earthrealm warriors from foiling her plan to reset the timeline, again. She even admits to them that they can kick her butt and feels threatened by them. What villain does that? Come on, you don't admit to the hero of the story that you feel threatened by their existence? Really? And then again, she just doesn't even do anything about it. She just does nothing. Gameplay-wise though, she also does nothing interesting with her powers at all. Like, she, she just doesn't. She can rewind your position and summon a T-Rex, but that's pretty much it. Dude, you got the Terminator in this game. Why couldn't there have been an update where she like opens a portal and he shoots at you from the other side of it? Mortal Kombat is supposed to be like 90s goofiness with its violence and toy-like characters. So why did we get this time god whose only gimmick is making dumb time puns? Come on, NRS. Nancy MI847J, Tekken 6. Extra round. Fight. Tekken is notorious for having some absurdly aggressive final bosses like Heihachi, Jinpachi, and Azazel. But one that is just pure nonsense is Nancy. This colossal tank of a robot will fire missiles and machine guns at you every chance it can get. And of course, just about nothing in her moveset is blockable. On top of that, your attacks barely do any damage against her. Nancy cannot be stunned, it cannot be launched, and it cannot be juggled. To make matters worse, Nancy can destroy parts of the floor to create holes, and yes, falling in one hole will result in an instant loss. You're not playing Tekken anymore at this point, this is freaking Soul Calibur. Dural Virtual Fighter Series We have nothing against Virtua Fighter, but we gotta ask, what is it with Sega and their obsession with Dural? Why has this living texture been the final boss in literally every single Virtua Fighter game since 1993? What makes her so infuriating to fight against is that she is totally unpredictable as her moveset is a giant mix of every fighter in the game. Some of the strings she can put together will eat away most of your health bar too, even on the easiest difficulty. So, not only is she the most visually uninteresting character in the franchise, she is also the most obnoxious. We know Dead or Alive has had similar characters like Alpha 152, but at least Alpha 152 does some cool moves. 
Dural, on the other hand, there's nothing interesting going on about Dural, and there's nothing interesting to even watch her fight. It's just a one-sided battle every single time. Knockout! Dr. Eggman, Sonic the Fighters. We aren't hating on Eggman because he's in the game or because he's operating a mech or anything. His last minute appearance was honestly kind of expected. However, he is on this list because of how important his fight feels. For starters, you only have 15 seconds to whoop his butt, but that's because the Death Egg is self-destructing, so it's a race against time! Fair enough, but why does the fight end regardless if we win or lose? At that point, his extremely short fight is there only for score. No matter if you beat him or if he beats you, you still get the same ending where you flee the death egg before it explodes. So if Metal Sonic was the hardest fight, shouldn't he have just been the final boss? Eggman just feels a tad forced in this regard. And lastly, Ultron Omega, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. <laughs> Good, evil. We have transcended such limited concepts. Capcom, what in the absolute hell was this? If there was any character that could embody the downfall of Marvel vs. Capcom, it's Ultron Omega. All Capcom did was take Sigma's ridiculously chiseled chin, enlarge it, then rip Ultron in half and slap the top half of him on Sigma's forehead. We cannot be destroyed. We are perfect. We are Ultron Omega. This monstrosity looks absolutely ridiculous in design, and not ridiculous in the good way. Not only that, Ultron Omega is the most boring final boss in the entire MVC series. Ultron Omega doesn't do much to fight back until you've got him down to like the last third or quarter of his health. We once had awesome final bosses like Cyber Akuma, Onslaught, and even Galactus. So the thought of somebody seeing this and going, that. That right there is our final boss. That's Ultron Omega. That is baffling. It's over. Yeah, I think you're right. What is the worst boss that you have encountered in a fighting game? For me, it really is Ultron Omega. That's kind of the inspiration for this whole list, to be honest. I, I hated Ultron Omega. But let us know down in the comments what you think is the worst boss in fighting games. And don't forget to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.